द नो वेयर मैन बाय कमला मार्कंडेया कैरेक्टर्स समरी एनालिसिस हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द डिस्कोर्स द नो वेयर मैन इज अ नॉवल रिटन बाय कमला मार्कंडेया दैट वाज फर्स्ट पब्लिश्ड इन द ईयर 1972 कमला मार्कंडेया वाज एन इंडियन एक्सपैट्रिएट लिविंग इन लंदन एंड ऑल ऑफ हर लिटरेरी वर्क्स आर मार्क्ड विद अ डीप सेंस ऑफ इंडियननेस एंड नोसालजिया thus it is considered a prime example of diasporic literature the nowhere man is the only novel by kamla markandeya that is set in london britain yet the story of this novel too is deeply connected with her diasporic indian roots the novel tells the tragic story of the alienation and exploitation of shrinivas an indian man who left india for his business in 1948 and made london his base city However he was never accepted as a british and had to face racism marginalism and alienation another major theme of the novel is the clash of eastern and western cultures and sensibilities characters of the nowhere man shrinivas is an elderly brahmin living in london at bangla number no. 5 he came to britain in 1919 for his business of spices it is 1968 and throughout his life he kept suffering alienation ostracization and racial hatred now it is becoming extreme because shrinivas is suffering from leprosy his doctor mr radcliffe suggests he shall not visit any public places marjorie is dr radcliffe's wife vasantha was his wife who died of tuberculosis he had two sons lakshman and seshu who both fought for britain during second world war but only lakshman returned as seshu died during the german blitz lakshman is also living in london but he has his family and he doesn't keep much contact with shrinivas pat is lakshman's wife mrs pickering is an impoverished divorcee who makes friends with shrinivas and they start living together at number 5 Fred Fletcher is the son of Shrinivas's neighbor who recently returned from Australia after the failure of his business. He is unemployed and frustrated. Fred starts blaming immigrants for his own failure and thus becomes a racial bigot. He specifically hates Shrinivas who is his neighbor. Summary of the Nowhere Man. Shrinivas is a young South Indian Brahmin guy who is a brilliant scholar. However, he faces racial discrimination and imperial oppression during his years at university in India. He actively participates in the non-violent protest marches against the atrocities of the British government and hence faces the consequences of that too. Despite that, he continues to outperform all others in his studies and wins a gold medal. Soon his family arranges his marriage with Vasantha, a beautiful and sensitive young Brahmin girl. Because of his academic excellence, Shrinivas gets an offer to go to England to pursue higher education. Shrinivas is not interested to go, but he sees no future in India and thus he decides to go to England with his wife in 1919. He settles in London and since he is not only a good scholar but also a brilliant entrepreneur, he succeeds in establishing a successful venture of Indian spices in London. His hard work and acumen pay off and he buys a home bungla number no. 5 in a posh area of London despite all his success excellent academic skills benevolent nature and deeply ingrained principles in non violence he and his wife were made to realize again and again by the host society that they are indian they face the situation of in betweenness and non belongingness However he continues to bear all the racial slurs and discrimination patiently while believing that England is his chosen nation Time passes by and his wife gives birth to two sons Lakshman and Sheshu both are born Britishers and they join the British army during the second world war However only Lakshman returns from the war front and Sheshu loses his life during the German blitz Sheshu's death breaks Vasantha and she falls ill with with tuberculosis and dies. After cremating her, Shrinivas decides to release her ashes in the river Thames. However, he was about to be arrested for throwing her ashes into the Thames. The river's not the place for rubbish, a policeman told him. But Shrinivas said that it is not rubbish but his loving wife. Despite being harsh and racist, the policeman feels a moment of compassion and lets Shrinivas go and perform the last rites. After his wife's death, Shrinivas suffers acute loneliness. When his son returns from the war, he settles with his wife Pat somewhere else in London. 
Lakshman doesn't live with his father and he doesn't like his father's typical Indian attitude and still continues to follow traditional Indian ways of living. His wife Pat does try to bridge the gap between her husband and father-in-law but ultimately they settle away from Srinivas's house and Lakshman keeps minimal contact with him. His younger son's and wife's death makes Srinivas delineate who doesn't care much for his business, his health and his physical condition. Srinivas briefly considers returning to India but finally concludes he had no notion of where to go in India, what to do when he got there. He knows that the country has changed. He also thinks to himself, this is my country now. He has already spent more than 40 years in London. Both his sons were born in London and he let go Vasantha's ashes in the river Thames. In some ways, he has become more English than the English around him. During such time, he meets Mrs. Pickering, who is an impoverished divorcee. Both develop a friendly relationship and then Mrs. Pickering decides to live with him at his home number 5. She starts taking care of him and his neighbors too feel good as now his home and the surrounding area appear better managed. While Mrs. Pickering and Srinivas admire and com compliment each other, they do face troubles because of the differences between their cultural roots. While Srinivas is totally non-violent and doesn't even wish to harm ants and feels bad if he mistakenly steps on mice, Mrs. Pickering is a western woman who considers such things senseless. She would eat non-vegetarian food and won't care much. Meanwhile, Srinivas continues to suffer racial slurs and as more immigrants from Asia and South Africa arrive in England, these racial abuses start becoming more intense and violent. While Srinivas continues to bear these discriminations calmly and doesn't react, Mrs. Pickering believes in action and she wishes him to directly confront such hooligans. Srinivas is rather passive and prefers talking reason. When immigrants are accused of being the root of all the British problems of unemployment, too much population and poverty, Srinivas referring to the exploitative history of the empire concludes that the reverse is true. That this bland country owed debts it had not paid, rather than scores which it had to settle. That the past had seen his countrymen sinned against rather than sinning. During such time, Srinivas falls ill and his doctor Mr. Radcliffe diagnoses that he is suffering from leprosy. His doctor tells him to avoid going to public places. Mrs. Pickering continues to nurse him and help him while he offers financial stability. Meanwhile, Fred Fletcher, who is the son of Srinivas's neighbor, returns from Australia after the failure of his business venture. He tries to find a job in London but remains unemployed. Fred Fletcher is angry and bitter, but instead of taking responsibility for his failure, he blames it on the arrival of black hordes and gets a reputation for being a black basher. He spends much of his time getting drunk in the pub, ranting about black and brown skinned people, getting above themselves and spewing racist jibes. He is particularly vitriolic against Srinivas and would often do mean things against him. He would throw dead mice at his home's door or would attack him with tar and other similar disturbing acts. Mrs. Pickering suggests Srinivas confront Fred and complain against him, but Srinivas would rather let it go. Mrs. Pickering, being a native herself, also has some sympathy for Fred who is unemployed and facing intense competition. While Srinivas is 70 years old and almost bound to his home because of his leprosy, Fred manages to frame him in a false charge of hooliganism and a warrant is issued against him. Srinivas is flabbergasted. While he manages to get bail, Mrs. Pickering suggests he return to India. How could Srinivas leave? He found he had no notion of where to go in India or what to do when he got there since so much had been destroyed or given up self-respect, livelihood, family cohesion during the struggle for independence. He doesn't belong to India now and now when he has been ostracized in England too, he belongs to nowhere. He is the nowhere man. Fred continues his vitriolic attack on Srinivas. One day, when he was alone at home, as Mrs. Pickering went out for some buying, Fred arranges a mob march in the area protesting against the immigrants. Srinivas listens to the racist slurs and slogans, hang the blacks, blacks go home and so on.
The situation worsens and turns violent. The mob starts picking homes of immigrants and blazing them. Fred attacks Srinivas's house and Srinivas gets trapped in the burning home. Dr. Radcliffe sees it all and tries his best to help Srinivas and rescue him but fails. So this is it for today. We will continue to discuss the history of Indian English literature. Please stay connected with the discourse. Thanks and regards.